our, our feeling about the place was that the theater really meant something. That these people not only were actors, but they actually believed that what they did was important. And certainly we think that what we do is important, but we tend to minimize it and, and say, oh, well, you know, particularly in a tough economic environment, this is something that um, is, could be considered unnecessary. When in fact, when you spend time at Ten Chimneys, you go, you know what? The culture of an organization, the culture of a country, the culture of a nation and a people is what keeps peace alive in the world. It's what creates human beings out of small children. And if you remove theater and music and art from their lives, what kind of people are you creating? And when you come to Ten Chimneys and you are surrounded by the sense of appreciation for art and beauty, it's so moving. And we all walked out of here crying our eyes out at the great joy that what we were doing had meaning. The work that I am witnessing makes me emotional to talk about. These people are amazing. Um, oh, here I am getting emotional about my colleagues. To see such devoted, committed people, it's very, very moving. They're all at the top of their game. It's so fantastic in every way, so creative, so joyful, so uh, so completely artistic. I'm completely in awe of them. And actually, uh, if I quit the theater today, I could sit and watch any one of them for the rest of my life and be completely happy. She has given some of the most insightful notes that I have ever experienced in a workshop in my life. She can say to an actor in one line something that will completely and utterly change their point of view and completely and utterly change their performance. Where is your darling Rutland? Look, York. I stained this napkin with the blood that valiant Clifford with his rapier's point made issue from the bosom of the boy. And if thine eyes can water for his death, I give thee this to dry thy cheeks withal. Alas, poor York that I do hate thee deadly. I should lament thy miserable state. I guess I hoped that I would maybe be able to dig a little deeper into the pieces that I had chosen to work on, but didn't expect that it would be transformative. And I just had an experience today of working on Gertrude's speech in Hamlet and uh, wound up working on it three times in probably 20 minutes or whatever it was with commentary from my colleagues and from Lynn on the piece itself. And I think not only did I, but everyone in the room went into a really profoundly thoughtful place about this one speech and the ramifications of this one speech on the larger picture of this huge play. On the pendant bows, her coronet weeds clamoring to hang, an envious sliver broke, when down her weedy trophies and herself fell into the weeping brook. Her clothes spread wide and mermaid like a while, they bore her up, which time she chanted snatches of old lords as, as one incapable of her own distress or, or like a, a creature native and endued unto that element. 
but long it, it could not be. Till that her garments, heavy with their drink, pulled the poor wretch from her melodious lay to muddy death. Every role that I enter into from now on, I'm going to be looking at first at a much more simple, personal level before I even take it to how am I telling the story? How am I going to theatricalize this for the audience? I think the experience of pulling everything smaller and smaller and smaller, which we've been doing in the room, has been really valuable because you touch parts of your, your spirit that, that maybe even though you're an actor and you work externally and expose yourself, there are still pieces that we save and hang on to and protect. And I don't feel inclined to do that anymore.